You are learning a total of three Salatul Fatiha. After completing the first one, you now have a clean soul. From the second Salatul Fatiha comes the Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Lazina Anam Talihim. Allah Himself guides and elevates you to the rank of the chosen ones. This is how Allah rewards the one who practices the zik. When you are on the third Salatul Fatiha, God begins to unravel the mysteries of the universe to you, if the third one is granted. From this observation, we can learn that the disciple of Mawlai Shaykh Ahmed Tijani, reciting the Salatul Fatiha, even if he performs a large number and his soul is still not clean, it is because his first Salatul Fatiha hasn't been granted. Your soul becomes clean once the first Salatul Fatiha is granted. If the disciple feels that his soul is clean, but doesn't think he was on the right path, meaning Allah erases his sins, but before evening the lighter goes back to sinning, then the first Salatul Fatiha has been accepted, but not the second one, on a spiritual training level. If the disciple is on the right path, but doesn't know anything which falls within the framework of Ghaib, doesn't know or feel the existence of God and its realities, prefers to stick with the Sharia only and leave out Haqiqah, then he should know that his third Salatul Fatiha has not been granted to him. The Haqiqah comes once the third one is granted. If you go to the world Ghaib, they teach you that the first Salatul Fatiha if you take it back to Ismuzati, the granted salawat becomes lahu towards you. The second one granted becomes lillahi towards you. And the third one granted becomes Allahu towards you. And Allahu nuru samawati wal ardi. Allahu la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum. Allahu comes first before anything falls within the framework of haqiqah. If you use your mind to think, you will conclude what your mind is able to handle. As for the rest, no one will be able to tell you which salawat is stronger than the other. Because Allah gave out a hint on the Quran when He said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wa shamsu wa duhaha, wa qamari iza tallaha, wa nahari iza jallaha, wa layli iza yakshaha, wa samai wa banaha. He showed you all of the realities. Then Allah went back and said to learn from him through your body. As he indeed created the sky, the earth, the sun, and the moon. After mentioning his creations, Allah tells you to go back to your haqiqah. Among all the creations, if you learn from yourself, your body, your soul, and how God created you, then you will be able to know your Creator. Mawlai Shaykh Ahmed Tijani said that this mystical experience, if you observe the relationship between Salat al Fatiha and Jawhirat al Kamal, you will have certainty and will apprehend the spiritual dimension of each of the two salawats. As for the benefits, it is acquired through its recitation. If you look into the Haqiqatul Muhammadiyah, you will find what the Ghaib said about these two salawats. The word Ghaib indicated that whoever wants to attend the Hadaratul Ilahiyah should focus on Salatul Fatiha. However, if you want to sit on the armchairs, then recite Jawharatul Kamal. Therefore, Jawharatul Kamal increases the martaba, while Salatul Fatiha increases the wilaya. Each of the two salawats has its functions. Salatul Fatiha favors spiritual power, while Jawharatul Kamal favors spiritual elevation. This is why Ghaib said, to attend the Hadaratul Ilahiya, one must perform the zikr of Salatul Fatiha, and to sit on the armchairs, then one must perform the zikr of the Jawharatul Kamal. From this observation, 
You can learn that one cannot work without the other. Because if we mention wilaya, our minds will automatically think of the martaba of the person. And if we mention martaba, the minds will think of the person's wilaya. We can note that these two essential salawats work one another. Now, if you want to define them on a human being, what is called the nafs is rectified by the Salatul Fatiha. And as for the soul with the Jawharatul Kamal, the pipe emanating lights from the Hadratul Ghaib, and in which Mawlai Shahamad Tijani comes with his red mantle, the Salatul Fatiha is the key to open it. But the pipe emanating the lights of the Prophet from the Hadra Muhammadiyah, located in the sixth heaven, is opened by Jawharatul Kamal. These two are also mentioned, the Prophet and his Khatmiya. All of this haqiqah goes back to Fahlamu annahu la ilaha illallah. This is why the disciple who completes his wazifa knows Allah more than the one who didn't practice wazifa. As your soul guarantees you this fact, same also goes for the lazim. Therefore, the disciple has two degrees, one in Sharia and the other one in Haqiqah. The Sharia shows that the disciple is following the footsteps of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is what Shaykh Al-Aj Malik si was alluding to when the subject came on regarding following the Sunnah of the Prophet The Haqiqah is the white cloth spread by the disciple during Wazifa to be able to welcome the Prophet at home. In the Sharia of the Tariqah, the Prophet comes at the seventh pearl. But in the Haqiqah of the Tariqah, it will depend on the soul of the person. The Prophet will appear alongside the Khulafa al Arba. Mawlai Shah Ahmad Tijani made sure to implement this reality for those who see with the eyes of their soul and heart. The human eyes can only see so much, while the eyes of the heart will only look at what it desires. As for the eyes of the soul, it will only see reality. This is why Mawlai Shah Ahmad Tijani said, if both of your eyes are covered, then open the eyes of your soul and never allow it to be closed. Because if the eyes of your soul are covered, then you won't be able to recognize the man of God, let alone people with pure heart. When the eyes of the heart are open, you will only be able to see those you appreciate. Finally, if you open your normal eyes, only things that interest you will be seen. Nevertheless, if the eyes of your soul are uncovered, then you will be able to see realities and hidden realities. Mawlai Shah Ahmad Tijani said, when completing the wazifa, lazim and hadaratul juma, make sure to open the eyes of your soul. These two salawats, from a haqiqatul muhammadiyah point of view, are both strong and equal. Both salawats have their unique functions, limitations, and attributes. For example, anybody from the Tariqah, Tijaniya, can recite countless numbers of the Salatul Fatiha. Some are reciting 12,000 times until seeing the Hadaratul Ilahiya, others 24,000 to 36,000 times. But Jawharatul Kamal, after one step, a Qutbu Zaman will turn his head. If you keep making progress, an Akhtar will pay you attention. And there is a status if reached, they will come and tell you to stop because it's their martaba. Shah al-Haj Umar said, people went in their fields to cultivate while I went to the heavens to grow a wall of Jawharatul Kamal. And whoever doesn't have the will and determination to keep up with the zikr would not be able to pass the wall. 
But whoever does so, it is because he is a caliph of Sheikh Tijani Sharif. Shah Laj Umar didn't say this about the Salat al-Fatiha, but he said it regarding the Jawhar al-Kamal. And the reason why is because the Salawat has levels of martabas owned by the awliya. As for the Salat al-Fatiha, every level has a reality and it will be up to the owner of the Salawat to accept or reject you. Now regarding Bani Adam, because if you go to the world Ghaib, they define Bani Adam how God organized Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam to Prophet Sisa until completing the Prophets. They mentioned the word Bani Adam, but they also mentioned people who don't come from Bani Adam as they are called Nuru Muhammad. Mawla Shia Ahmed Tijani uses those terms. If you ask for Bani Adam, they will point them out to you. But if you ask for Nuru Muhammad, Ghaib will reply with Wa Minka. It includes everyone who comes from Nur Muhammad. If you mention Umin Nuhin, then you are referring back to Bani Adam. Ghaib specifies these two groups to differentiate the Prophet peace be upon him and his reality of prophecy, that is to say his reality of Nubuwa. Ghaib also talks about humans and their spiritual formation to confirm what Allah said in the Quran. La yukallifullahu nafsan ilahu sa'aha as humans cannot handle everything. Humans can sometimes be afraid. But Nuru Muhammad are guaranteed. They are part of the Mirul Kauna, the hidden side. And when they speak, it's Wamayantuhu Anil Hawa in Huwa illa Wahin Yuha. There is a difference between someone who speaks from the Wahyu or Nubuwa and the one who gets all his knowledge from the books. This comparison is the relationship between Bani Adam and Nur Muhammad. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet peace be upon him to never speak from book knowledge because the information he receives from the Wahyu is far more superior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it even further to let everyone know that he is a Nabi Ummi, meaning the Prophet peace be upon him is unable to read. He didn't learn from the text and the fact that he is a Nabil Ummi simply means he doesn't need to learn from a teacher. When Allah once told the Prophet to recite the Quran in front of Ubay ibn Kaf, the people were confused because since God already pronounced the Prophet was a Nabil Ummi, they thought he wasn't able to teach the Quran. During that time, the Prophet knew what was going through their mind and told them, I demanded my Lord a favor. I asked him to allow some similarities between us so you can understand me. Because if you think I'm someone who doesn't forget or I live a different life apart from the rest, then you wouldn't be able to understand me. And for the success of this mission, you must understand each other. Allah granted the Prophet's request. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَّا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ but still referring to Nur Muhammad, Yuha Ilayya. The Prophet looks just like you, understand him, he behaves just like you, but he holds a prophecy. As you can see, this is the relationship between Nur Muhammad and Bani Adam. Now, if this Nur Muhammad, Mawlai Shi Ahmad Tijani Sharif, extracted the haqiqah and incorporated his qadmiya inside him. Sheikh Tijani Sharif is not part of Bani Adam. This is why, this is why Sering Baba Karsi is very amazing. When he wanted to let people know that Mawlai Shah Ahmed Tijani is not included in Bani Adam, he said, As he is part of Nur Muhammad. Mawlai Shah Ahmed Tijani Sharif brought out his light of this Nur Muhammad uses the wahi when speaking and all realities from the heavens emanating from Salat al-Fatiha and Jawharat al-Kamal are pleased with it. But now in these dark times, Ghaib are afraid that people won't know the existence of Nur Muhammad. 
Mola Shah Ahmed Tijani answers them that the people will know about Nuru Muhammad until the end times, thanks to this chant. Ghaib went back and said, How are we going to recognize in this Akhiru Zaman people who live with Nuru Muhammad so we can identify and pray for them and show how satisfied we are with their light? Sheikh replied, You will recognize them once you see a group of kids raise their hand in the sky while chanting. Whoever thinks we are doing this for fun, <laughs> then you have no idea what's going on. When we are in a group performing this chant, we are not addressing to the people watching, but we are interpelling the angels who are asking for Nur Muhammad. The light is still shining. And it is those hands raised with the sign of Allahu, chanting the song Allahu Nur Allahi La ilaha illallah. If you knew where this song passes through, Allahu Nur Allahi La ilaha illallah. When it is chanted, it pierces the hadara of Mawlai Shah Ahmed Tijani and enters directly the hadara Muhammadiyah, that is the headquarter of the Prophet وسلم, also known as the source of all lights from the Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah, and finally goes through the principal source before arriving in front of God the Creator. Allah then says, When I was stating Allah bi zikrillahi tatmani al when I was stating wa zikrullahi akbar, the kids in akhiru zaman are fulfilling this task. Akhiru Zaman is a very dark period. The world is in total chaos. Everyone is confused. The kids don't know who to follow anymore. There's no more respect and modesty between the kids and adults. Everyone is busy bragging about their fields. Everyone is busy bragging about their money. Everyone is busy bragging about their houses. And now Allah wants to know who is going to chant His name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then orders the angels to prostrate and recite Surah Al-Ikhlas or he will end the world. 
The angels obey the Lord and recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. Allah in turn says, something is still missing. As he has to look up to certain individuals to not end the world. As soon as he tries to do so, he immediately abandons this decision because of the children's making the sign of Allah. Special thanks to the one who brought Nuru Muhammad. If it wasn't for Mula Shah Ahmed Tijani, this spectacle would have never happened. You would have never seen it in the books because it is a haqiqa, a haqiqatul ahmadiyya. Therefore, if it wasn't for him, this spectacle would never happen. So all thanks to Mula Shah Ahmed Tijani. However, you should know that the whole world will be chanting this song from Senegal, China, United States, Indonesia, Liberia, Libya, to Burkina Faso, everywhere people will be raising their hand up in the sky with the sign Allahu while chanting this zikr. Every ethnicity, whether they are African people, American people, or Asian people, you will hear them. Starting from 2022, there will only be one rhythm, only one voice. People will be heading to work with their luminous faces, smiling and raising their hands while chanting. When this will happen, Allah will solve every problems of this world. When people were tired and needed help, Sarim Baba Kursi told them to chant the name of Allah to remedy their situations. Nevertheless, one can chant the name of God and Allah will not feel that you are chanting his name. But when the youth will be singing this song, the Lord will automatically grant their request. Muslims and non-Muslims, the Tijani and the non-Tijani, whoever has an ounce of light and a little bit of love towards God in his heart, if he hears this song, even if he has jealousy in his heart, will know it's a good song. Same as if you don't speak Arab, you will acknowledge the goodness of this chant. As this zikr penetrates the soul, listen how the youth is chanting it.